EMC, Redefine, VCE, innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade, say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas with EMC World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Yuri Rabover, founder of VM Turbo, hot company, lots of customers. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Good to um, see you. Thanks for you coming. You guys are growing fast. Um, before we get into to, to the company, I want to ask your take on, on this year's EMC World. What do you think? What's your first impression? My first impression actually is very nice. I believe the world is uh, driving to the right direction. The recognition of the virtualization software definition is clearly, you can see it at every corner. However, what we also like and feel very excited because this is only the beginning of the journey. And there are many, many things to recognize and do and that's, that's part of uh, our strategy. That's what we're trying to do. So uh, my Short answer to your question, I, I feel very positive what's going on at EMC World. What's your take on your current company? Give us a quick update on when you guys started, what are you guys doing, what's the status of the company? I know you mentioned before we started, you guys lost the customers. Just give us a quick update on the company. Uh, we started five years ago. We uh, got uh, our venture funding in, the end of, uh, in December 2008, and if you remember the time, like a bank a week went down, we got our first yeah, the funding. market crashed in what, October? And then you got uh, your first Yes, round and we got December. our round in December. So <laughs> that was, on one hand, very impressive, and on the other hand, very challenging. <laughs> right. So we started selling our first solution uh, at the end of the uh, third quarter of 2010. Uh, now, we grew from that time by about 320%. We're growing 100% year after year, quarter after quarter. We currently have about 600 customers. Uh, paying customers, and we have over 10,000 free users of our free, uh, freemium solution. And uh, what is common across all these customers, they actually quite different, different verticals, financials, uh, insurance, uh, educational, enterprise, service providers, what is common across all these customers, that they actually experience problems which are very natural, inherent to the virtualization. Basically, when they reached about 30, 40, 50% of the uh, virtualized state, the growth starts stalling. So virtualization has been a big part of the trend. Obviously, we love virtualization. It's the engine of innovation. Still more to come, so much more action. Uh, it's a software dream, if you think about it from the developer right. standpoint. Flash has certainly changed the game from a persistent store standpoint, doing, again, more for software developers. So I got to ask you, what does the DSSD mean here? I mean, obviously, we're trying to stitch it together. Um, and Andy Fessenstein's company, what does that mean for the EMC ecosystem from your perspective? You mean uh, the DSSD acquisition that they announced today? Actually, I just read about it this morning, so <laughs> I still need time you to. I need still uh, need time to digest. So yeah. I <laughs> give. Uh, it happened like two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is analyst TV. Come on, <laughs> you got to have an answer right so away. You can't say no answer. <laughs> Make something up. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it's a, it's a big move. Obviously, they're moving down to looking for stable stable infrastructure on the flash array, where right. in the converged infrastructure we heard from VCE, uh, VBlock's doing very, very well. Virtualized stuff is hot right now. Uh, this is true, however, what's, what's, uh, this trend and a couple of other trends actually create a very interesting environment. I actually find two key pieces of technology heavily impacting the market. It's virtual SAM in production by VMware, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, SDN, Software Defined Networking, which VMware happened to own both. And they actually drastically changed the way the industry is going to work. Because if vSAN catches up, it may have an impact on even on the parent company and EMC because of the storage commoditization. Right, well don't you think, I mean vSAN or some instantiation of server SAN is going to going to take off. I mean, for 20 years we saw all the function move out of the server and you can see it swinging back now, right. can you? Right, and I, I believe it's so natural that it hap it's happening now, I believe it will take off. Uh, I don't see why not. Uh, it's a challenging time for uh, 
hardware vendors, including storage vendors. They need to, to, to react. So let's talk about uh, VM Turbo a little bit. I remember sure. in one of my first VM worlds, it became blatantly obvious that, that virtualization at the server level breaks storage and creates really real problems uh, in terms of performance, understanding performance, visibility, how to remediate problems. Uh, talk about uh, VM Turbo and what problem you guys are solving. We're solving actually one very important problem, which today, while it's recognized, is not solved. We're trying to guarantee the workload service levels while at the same time increasing and maximizing infrastructure utilization efficiency. This is a very important problem and today it's solved probably like mostly by manual labor. Look, look at that. Look at the industry today. It's, it has this like break and fix mentality. The IT is the only industry today which still relies on human labor to fix problems. It's expected to be broken, and it's expected that people will come and fix it. Think of any other industry, mission critical industry in the world we live in, which work like that. No, look at the chemical nuclear plants, look at air, uh, air, airline industry. You do not expect these entities to break and be fixed by human, no. The IT industry happens to be the last one, and that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve. Okay, and so how do you solve that problem? So basically, what we do, we recognize one important fact. In order for the workload service levels to be intact, it needs to receive the resources it requires. Uh, we, our solution, which, uh, using the common data model, attaches all layers of the IT stack, represent them as a single common data model, and allows to basically bring the workload demand with the equilibrium of the infrastructure supply. If we accomplish this equilibrium using our economic scheduling engine, the workload will definitely receive the resources it needs. It means the service levels will be intact. But because it's an equilibrium, the infrastructure utilization will be as high as possible and safe for the workload levels. We accomplish this by using economic principles of, and laws of supply and demand. Okay, so you, the value proposition is you guarantee that, that service level for that particular workload. Uh, uh, while maximizing uh, the efficiency of the infrastructure. This is a very important aspect. Yeah, you're not just throwing hardware at the problem. Exactly, because it's very easy to solve one problem or the other. You can always throw in a lot of hardware, or you can increase the utilization of the infrastructure. However, if you need to accomplish what we call the intelligent workload management problem, how to do it at the same time, this is a very challenging. And you do this for VMware and other hypervisors as well? Today we support pretty much everything uh, which exists on the market. We support all hypervisors, VMware, Hyper-V, uh, Rev. Uh, we support all cloud solutions, uh, cloud stack, open stack, virtual cloud director. We support public clouds like uh, Amazon and Azure. Basic work across the board, including specific storage solutions like NetApp and EMC, obviously, uh, converge fabrics like Cisco ECS. We work across How all are you the able to areas. support all this stuff? This is actually one of the key advantages. Because we have a common data model and the layered architecture, which allows us to abstract everything into a, sing a single layer, which does not depend on the specifics of the uh, infrastructure. And we have small, very thin uh, plugins in our mediation layer to support additional pieces of technology. But the key thing is a common data model, which allows us to unify the entire IT stack across all the silos, across all the layers. Interesting, I mean, you're on your site, everybody's talking about software defined, you were sort of mentioning it before. What do you make of, of Viper? Is it the future of storage, or, or is it a, a way to consolidate the EMC silos? A little bit of both, what do you think? Uh, I think Viper is absolutely the right direction. Yes, it, it's uh, designed to consolidate all various storage technology, represent them as a single control plane, if you will, which will be easier to manage. Uh, so you absolutely need to start with that. However, in order to use this efficiently, it's not enough just to define. You need to control it actively. And that's actually exactly what our value proposition is. We run on top of a software-defined data center and we drive and control this environment to this desired state. Basically, the short statement about what we do, we, re we present to the market software-defined control of the software-defined data center. There's real friction between the VM admin and the storage admin. 
Um, and, yes. and a lot of times, <laughs> the, 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 the VM admin doesn't know what's going on, the storage admin says everything's cool, and there's a little bit of this going on. Do you, do you see that, and do you help address that problem? We absolutely see that, and the roots of that go back to the physical world, but the, uh, all these teams were completely separate. However, because of the physical world, it was easier to manage it. Everything was static, not shared, and people could get away with it. Today, everything is shared, and this divide becomes more obvious. Our solution actually helps these multiple teams, not only server and storage team, but them in particular, to actually have the common discipline of controlling. We actually unify various disciplines under the uh, single control plane and help bring these teams together. Our customers actually point out as one of our value points is team, team unification. So this is exactly our one of our value problems. Yuri, thanks for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate it. I'll give you the final word. Share with the folks in your own words, why is this point in time, 2014, such an exciting and important time in the history of technology? I think the industry reached the point where everything is defined in software and it needs badly different ways of managing it. I believe we reach the critical mass of new technology components and new technology approaches, and it's time to recognize that the old ways of managing this infrastructure, which has roots like 20, 30 years ago, can no longer be used. The industry needs something new. The interesting something new, this is theCUBE, we bring that to you here at EMC World Live, extracting the signal from the noise. Yuri, thanks for that great comment, great interview, appreciate the Q&A. Uh, VM Turbo, uh, taking names, and you know what they're doing. So we'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for coming.